What's up? All right, so this is the second lecture that is popping up for the week starting the first day of class, Monday, May 23rd, 2022. Summer Joe 200, all right? So you guys hopefully have um, watched the videos um, about how to get an A. Um, I did the uh, very first section about global aging, a lot of the implications. We kind of set it all up in terms of which countries age more quickly. Um, we talked about uh, the the um, economic fallout, okay? We talked about the lack of fertility, okay? We talked about within the economic fallout, we talked about, um, you know, really the big um, canary in the coal mine, and that is uh, that's, um, healthcare and, and uh, diseases of aging, the non-communicable diseases like cancer, like diabetes, like heart disease that comes from diabetes, and um, Alzheimer's that also is linked to diabetes, all right? All right, so let's get in here. Um, and, and, and this is just kind of a survey article. Um, I know it's long, but just I'm guiding you through it. Um, this time you're going you're gonna to actually post something relevant in the discussion. Okay, again, remember, with the discussion, do a one primary post, and you do three poof, sub, um, substantive posts on, on your, on your um, friends. Comment on what, they, what their insight is into the course and in terms of the discussion, okay? So um, so here we go, all right? So we're going to go right into uh, our weekly assignment, okay? Um, so this would be the second lecture right here, okay? Again, it's starting on the 23rd, okay? All right. Um, the, the third one will come later on, okay? Again, you see everything is due a week from now, May 31st. Get everything done by the following Monday, 11.59. Boom, everything's late, and you get points taken off. So you want to do that. Just, you know, so line it up, be scheduled, be uh, dependable, okay? Um, and because uh, when things are late in real time, you're like, for me, if I submit uh, applications to get money from the federal government grants, uh, if I'm a day late, then I got to wait um, another nine months before I get to submit it again. So so that's this is why deadlines are so important. All right, cool. Let's go right into part two of global aging. This video is going to go right in here, my friends. Okay, so um, again, the same drill. I think the best strategy is to go ahead and open the quiz. Okay, so we can come over here and I'm going to go into my Blackboard account. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shh, scroll down to, oh, sorry, it was last semester. We'll scroll right here to our summer class. Okay, I'm going to go back into the weekly assignments. All right. Um, I'm going to find the second week, just like I did earlier. I'm going to scroll down here, and I'm going to open my reading quiz. All right, and hit begin. And uh, what I would do is I would just quickly just let, let me look at the the questions, okay? Um, uh, and why is divorce rate important when thinking about providing care to older people, okay? Which country has the lowest public pension incentive for men to leave the labor market, okay? Um, um, and and uh, you just look them over, okay? So you, you, you grab them in your head, and you can have two browsers open, okay? You can have uh, the, uh, the same browsers like I'm doing open twice and just go back and forth, okay? Awesome. All righty. Um, this is the discussion that you'll be doing later, and I'll guide you through that. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up the uh, PDF file again, okay? And um, we're going to go right in, okay? And here we go. We're in, okay. Uh, we can get it to so we're um, able to read the thing because it's too too uh, big. Before I'm going to go right here so I can scroll down. So we did um, uh, at the very beginning we did forward through trend five. Now we're going to do trend six all the way through endnote. Okay, pretty awesome. Okay, all right. And again, I'm just going to kind of guide you through everything. And um, obviously, the second half of this um, this article. Um, piggybacks on the first half. All right, so we're going to get all the way down here. So I'm scrolling down here to there. All right, so, um, uh, and even the first part was kind of an overview. So, so this, you know, I, again, goes into um, the issue of family structure, okay? And uh, so, you know, your parents and your grandparents are going to be living longer. And so, uh, sorry. So, um, so the dynamics of family structure are going to change. You know, you're going to be pressured. They call call it the sandwich generation. Okay, and uh, you know, I I I was you know 
sandwiched as well um, uh, between my children and my parents, okay? Um, but not my grandparents, okay? Because um, it was a far different time for me. So you guys potentially are going to be sandwiched in between um, your children, your parents, and your grandparents, okay? And so um, they're all dependent on you, okay? Um, so, so even though your child dependency ratio is going to be smaller because you may have one or two kids, you're going to have all these older adults that are dependent on you, okay? And it can be lots of things. It's emotional support. I mean, it takes time getting on the phone, okay? Zooming, okay? Even texting, staying in touch, whatever it is, that's time. Time's money, my friends. Um, the other thing is there's a lot of what we call instrumental care, okay? So you may have to help them around the house. You may have to help them uh, get to the doctor, okay? You may have to help them in terms of um, covering their finances and uh, being a watchdog over their finances, their health care and well-being. So there's there's a lot going on for everybody, okay? There are agencies um, that um, are emerging that you can hire for help, uh, but you have to be vigilant because um, there are a lot of uh, nefarious people out there that will uh, screw your parents and grandparents out of um, their personal belongings and around the house and, and um, their financial well-being. Okay, so... Um, when we look at it, they, you know, the, the people that study populations, they like to give things names. Um, they they call it a beanpole family. It used to be like a pyramid, okay, in terms of, of, of here's your grandparents, okay. There's older people, okay, and then and then there's um, not as many middle aged, but there were a ton of kids, okay, like this. If we looked at society and the globe like that, but now it's like this. There's equal numbers of kids. Um, uh, people your generation, um, your parents and grandparents. So it's the distribution is is very lopsided, and that's what they mean when they call this a uh, beanpole uh, um, distribution of of populations. Okay, um, so um, uh, because people live longer, um, if you were to have children at a younger age, you would have uh, again it, it's unique with this longevity that people get to, to know multiple generations. And by the way, when you when you look at the final project, I'm going to reiterate this. Uh, probably one of the best things you can do is uh, take out your iPhone and do little video clips as you interview your parents and grandparents. Keep it for posterity so that you can show your grandkids someday. It's pretty cool, all right? All righty. So this is unique, you know, historically, um, obviously as, as people live longer. And so um, it just talks in here about uh, generations and, and, um, and how they've changed, okay? The other thing that happens, okay, is um, um, people culturally um, <laughs> would, would hang in there and not get divorced, okay? It just was what it was way back in the day, okay? So um, culture has changed, okay? So you have a lot more um, uh, dynamic, um, moving, fluid families, um, blended families is what they talk about right here. Um, where there's higher uh, uh, rates of divorce and remarriage. Um, and so now your your relationships uh, in terms of family extend uh, uh, far differently than they used to be, okay? Then they go through here and they just talk about, you know, um, the age distributions and changes. And I'm, I'm just going to let you kind of read through that. And uh, the, 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 the bottom line, like I said, um, um, times have changed. Um, uh, people don't get married anymore, okay? Um I'm making a sweeping generalization, but a, a far, far ma more people stay in relationships that are uh, cohabitation without getting married. And then that changes the contract as well. People are much more li likely to um, to disperse. OK, uh, women outlive men. OK, so uh, non married women. Um, um, are far lo longer, more likely be just because of inequities in the system. They have less money in terms of assets and pension, okay? Um, if you're married, we'll see later on, that really, really improves your overall um, uh, financial well-being and as a result, um, your overall health, okay? Um, money gets you good things, okay? Um, so a lot more people are becoming childless, okay? Uh, and my kids, you know, I have, have a, a couple of, um, of people in the, in, in the family that have, you know, my, my brother has not never been married, no kids. So they're going to inherit those assets. And the same thing happened in my generation. All righty. Cool. All righty. So uh, when you have 
fewer younger people in um, in in your society, in your family, then the living arrangements change. Okay, um, so uh, you know, um, multi generational household was kind of a, a norm. Okay, of society. Uh, I grew up, turned eighteen, psh, went off to college, and never came home. Okay. Um, that's not the way the rest of the world was. That's not how we were historically. We had these nuclear families where you had just tiers of caregiving and support and, um, and even community-based caregiving, okay? And, and again, um, I think the trend needs to go back the other way just in terms of affordability. You know, I certainly don't want to be put into some assisted living facility or uh, a nursing home if I don't have to. And if it, my kids can coordinate so I can stay here living in place in my house, that would be ideal. And there are new businesses that are out there that um, um, are home health aides and home support aides. Um, there's uh, patient advocacy groups, things like that. And I think that's the future, okay? So this is just, again, um, data that uh, happened to be uh, going over the spectrum from 1916 to 2000. Things have obviously progressed, okay, in the last 20 years. But you can see what the trend is right here. And this is um, living arrangement for people of Japan age 65 and over, okay? So if, if you were 65 and over in 1960, okay, um, the likelihood of living in some institution, like an assisted living facility that is not part of your family, was pretty slim, okay? And so what we see here is it's growing and growing and growing and growing in Japan, okay? Now, again... Japan had that has that issue where um, where there there is a, a lack of fertility, meaning people have have elected not to get married and not to have children, and have been driven because of the competitiveness of society to get a job. Okay, and so what happens then? Um, you know, you you are a parent, you've had one child, the child moves off uh, to the other side of Japan, or even moves to LA or whatever. You're living alone, and so we see that's growing and growing and growing. Okay. Um, we see that, um, you know, back in the day, okay, right here, the blue one, okay, the, the tradition was this, again, this, this cultural uh, expanded nuclear family, and, and, and we see this is declining dramatically, and it's continued to decline down here. And so oftentimes, you know, older couples are left uh, living alone. It's the biggest expanse. But when somebody dies, then you start creeping up into here, okay? All right, that's the trend that we're, we're headed toward, uh, towards as well, okay? Alrighty, um, so, um, you know, uh, if you want to continue to live in place and, and live a high quality of life, uh, money talks, all right? So, um, so uh, and we're finding that, and this, this is a, a question you're going to propose, propose to your parents or grandparents about the adequacy of Social Security. It's, it, and, of course, they're going to respond that it's totally inadequate that people live at the poverty level, okay, if they're living solely on, on or even below the poverty level, if they're living solely on Social Security, okay. Um, we're also going to learn um, today, we're going to talk about, um, so uh, um, there is a, a, a retraction from the public pension system, okay, meaning governments are trying to figure out ways to, to not have to pay as much into public pensions, okay, like Social Security or the versions that they have through all the, the um, European countries. And they're pushing us to be more self-sufficient, and that is to do our own um, personal investments. Okay, and um, and this is what's called instead of a, instead of a uh, defined pension set up by the government, it's called a defined contribution, where I contribute what I want into uh, my retirement. Now, you know, if you have money, that's easy to do. If you don't, people a lot of people live from paycheck to paycheck, and uh, we'll see that um, studies have shown that if we look at people in our country that um, are age 55 to 60, okay, and we look and see how much money do they have put away into a retirement account, uh, the middle of our country, the median, okay, is about $17,000, which is mind-blowing, okay? So that means there's going to be more and more burden put on you guys in terms of being um, generous to those that have less, okay? And, and, and there's going to be a greater tax burden for that. Anyways, so um, if you haven't had a good pension, uh, defined contribution and the government starts to retract on the pension, then we have um, this shifting uh, pattern 
of people uh, working much longer in life, okay? And that's what this chap chapter is about. So shifting and changes in retirement, okay? Because of these economic realities, okay? And um, um, yeah, in, in, you know, if we're looking at developing countries, you know, this is even a huger issue. So the medicine's getting there first. Um, uh, people are living longer, okay? But um, the, 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 the government and the countries are not set up for economic stability. And so it's a huge concern that there's gonna to be tons of poverty in these countries that haven't had the, um, the foresight to, to, to make these changes, okay? So we can look here again, again at, um, at, uh, at this figure that's gonna kind of compare these different um, um, uh, economies in these different countries. But the bottom line is the central issue is, is these pension funds um, and um, uh, what are we going to do? You know, how are we going to reduce that burden? Okay, um, and so we see right here that the trend in again, this is just a, this data set. You can see it's going upward and upward and upward. And that is that um, uh, back in the day, people in the European Union, uh, half half the people would um, between the ages of 55, 64 would would retire. Okay, and uh, of course. Differences in terms of gender roles. Um, far fewer uh, women were uh, were working. So this is looking at how many people are working of this age group, and you see that for this 55 to 64 age group, that more and more and more and more people, men are working. And what you see here is there's a steeper decline in the increase for women. Okay, um, and and that it goes back to what I was talking about is that it's difficult for women. Um, especially if they have taken on this traditional ro role of mom and, um, and, 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 and really deferring a career, and then they have to do catch up, okay? All something to think about, my friends. Okay, so, um, and what countries got themselves into trouble, all right? So we see right here, um, we're looking at the, the public pension incentive, okay? So this is where the government says, I'm gonna guarantee you this monthly income when you retire, okay, um, at age 55 to 65, okay, I'm gonna guarantee this income, so why, why should I work, okay? So we're looking over here, um, this is the public pension incentive to retire early. There's a high incentive, like I said, in all these old European countries, okay? Italy, Belgium, France, the Netherlands, they're completely burdened by this guaranteed income that the government's gonna pay out to these people and people say, screw it, I'm not gonna work anymore, okay? And then we, Come down here, okay? Uh, we're less burdened, but you can see what Japan has done, okay? Japan has um, has really reduced um, the the pension system, and, the, and so you have to invest in your own well-being, okay? Which gets into this pension system is this evol you know, you know, ours is called Social Security, and um, and then you know. Uh, co-tailing on that, of course, is the medical benefits, and that's Medicare, okay? So we're seeing. Um, this, these changes that are happening in terms of um, um, the social security system, okay? And changes that have to happen. So you guys read through this, okay? You get the feel right here. But uh, again, the big change right here um, is we're gonna see this increase um, as as I see right here. Hmm. I can't get it to highlight, but that's okay. Let me just do it this way. Yep, nope, I'm not gonna get it. Oh, that's right, if I go backwards. No, that's not gonna work. How about that? How beautiful is that? Okay, boom. Okay, so bottom line is we're gonna have to tax you more. My, my young friends who um, are in serious debt uh, from, from going to school, we're gonna uh, raise payroll taxes so that we can pay for these older people, all right? So this is a, a hot ticket item, okay? Definitely, okay? Better than that, however, okay, let's improve tax incentives so that we all go out there and we do our individual personal contributions to our own well-being, okay? So uh, make it easier to, um, to have uh, deferred tax um, uh, retirement accounts, okay? Uh, I would say extend the range for the Roth IRAs, okay? So that you can invest in it now. Um, let's say instead of having a maximum income for a Roth IRA of 40 grand, make it a maximum income of 100 grand, all right? Those kind of things. All right, now um, let's look at how, um, uh, again, a readout of the economic well-being of these countries, okay? So you can see right here, um, the 
percent of the gross domestic product, and this is a measure of the total economy of that country, um, that is devoted to paying out pensions, paying out guaranteed salaries to their people that are retired, that are retiring at age 50, okay? And you see Italy is at the top right here, okay? Poland, Germany, these are just, uh, you know, again, they're, they're looking across the board. Ireland says, no, no, you're going to have to work. And then the average right here is about 12.6, okay? And in the United States, we're hanging right around here as, as well in the sevens. Okay. Um, so China, okay, um, had to deal with this as well because the big deal with China is um, they were so worried about overpopulation that they instituted, of course, the one child law where um, uh, you could only have one child. All right, that's fine. Okay, so it's, it, began, it began to change population momentum and corral in the increases. They still are increasing in numbers because their population is so huge. So even if you have one or two kids, boom, it's going to be still a significant amount of um, um, increase in population. Okay, but they had to uh, do Social Security reforms. Okay, had to do pension reforms. Okay, and this is uh, kind of a readout of what, what happened. Okay, so these right here um, are going from 1980 to 2005. This is continued to increase. Okay, and this is this data set right here, and you see how many more um, millions of people are tapping into the pension system, and then you look at the, at um, um, the ratio of workers that are paying into that pension system. So back in the 80s, there might be 15 workers that based on their tax base would be paying into the system. And see, now you're dropping in, like as we saw earlier, uh, for Europe, it's projected to be two, and they're, they're way um, um, past um, that, that threshold of two and going down. So these are big emerging economic challenges, okay? And so something has to be done, my friends. You read through this right here, and, uh, and this is you know one solution. You know, our country really, really, I think, needs to step up the bat and make it easier for us to um, to save money, okay? To to put money into these deferred tax accounts, okay? Or allow us to to uh, put it, you know, um, take money at a very low tax rate, put it into my Roth IRA, and then when I pull it out. When I'm poor and I'm 75 years of age, I pull that money out and it won't be taxed. You'll see that's a big difference, okay? All right, this is my dog, Bella, okay? So, um, uh, and again, you see Italy, Spain, Greece, all these countries are just hamstrung um, because uh, the people are like, why would I take my money and invest it when you're going to give it to me anyways, guaranteed because of um, the pension system, right? And But other countries are more progressive right here, okay? So you can see that a lot of people in, um, in Sweden and Denmark are in view of investing in, of course, individual companies, which is a stock, or big bundles of stocks, which are called mutual funds. That's what, that, that is the safe thing to do. That's what we do. We, we have lots and lots of money invested in all these um, mutual funds. You can have the tech sector. You can have the manufacturing sector. You can have um, um, farming sector, whatever it is, okay? Um, so that's that's the the, the the future. We're going to train you into how how do how to do that. Okay, alrighty. So um, and and um, so read through all this. It explains to you this concept about uh, investing, and, and um, you can see right here this keyword of dividends. So if you have an individual stock in a big company, it will kick off money as the as the company grows, and then you can take the, those dividends and reinvest them. Okay, or you can spend them right there and then but you're going to pay taxes on it if you do. It's a big deal. Taxes are a big deal, okay? So we, we, we look at this concept of work, okay, again. Um, and uh, you know, here you guys go into school, okay? And, and then you start to enter, enter the labor market. You start making money, okay? Um, and you're then less of a burden, less of a drain, okay? You are, are uh, part of the gross domestic product, okay? You're a positive, okay? You start making lots of money, okay, right here, okay? And this is a, an estimation of the annual per, cap, per capita income, okay, of a Thai worker, okay? We'd have a different curve, but a very similar distribution when we look at any country, okay? And uh, and you're right here, you're peaking, okay, in terms of your labor income. And then, um, then you might start reducing your hours, especially if you are, let's say you're a doctor, or you're, let's say you have your own company, 
And then you come out here and you're, um, you get to the point that you're generating very little income, okay? The bottom line though is you get into this age range and you're still gonna be a major consumer. You're gonna have needs, okay? Well, that's what a consumer means. You're gonna have to spend. And that money is gonna have to come from somewhere. So that money is coming, of, uh, which could be a third line here from the, um, the, uh, the pension system, okay? All righty, very cool. All right, so that's what that's all about, my friends. We can now go back over here to the course, okay? And so then um, there's, there is a, a discussion this time around, okay? So we want you to check out these charts, okay? Again, this is global dynamics, this chan transition of, of who's going to be dependent on you guys financially, emotionally, and just time in terms of support, okay? You can see this transition in the old people, all right? So... Wrap your head around that, okay? Um, how quickly this transition is happening in different countries, okay? Like we saw earlier, France had nothing but time. We had a reasonable amount of time, and then all these other countries, you know, they're not prepared, okay? All righty. Um, and then you can just see raw numbers, okay? And you see how, how enormous millions and millions of people, okay, over the age of 65, uh, projected for both uh, the two most populous countries in the world, China and India. And by the way, you know who's right behind them? Nigeria and uh, in Africa. So you got to think about that. So this is what I talked about, okay, right here, how to think about it. Again, people are coming to places like the Davis School of Gerontology, trying to come up with solutions, something to think about, okay. Um, and, um, uh, and then we consider uh, the country that went through that transition um, super fast, okay, and um, and again, the culture is not to be get married, not to have kids, and it's, ju it's Japan, and so I want you to think about this, this, this concept, Japan is dying, all work, no sex means no future, uh, and, and then you look in here, and um, the age bomb, like I said, that is happening in, um, in Japan, okay, so this is analysis, so watch these videos, so you scroll, you look at the the figures I talked about here, you watch these videos, and then this right here um, is, a, is a really cool article. Um, you have to have a subscription, uh, in most cases, to Business Insider. I put on the link, but here's a PDF file that you can download and read the article, and it just talks about um, deaths of the family, Jan Japan's fertility crisis, crisis creating huge economic and social woes, okay? So it's a really, really cool article, and it's, you know, it's, it's potentially in our future, so it's something to think about. All right, guys? Okay, very cool. Um, uh, peace, uh, and we'll see you guys on the other side.